Today I'm going to go over how to set up a Raspberry Pi NFS server using this Toshiba USB th uh, thumb drive which is half a terabyte in size. I'll also be using this drive for the boot. So let's get started. To get started we're going to need to download the latest version of Raspbian. The version I'm using 2021-1030 is the latest at the time that I made this video. We're going to be using the 64-bit even though it is still considered to be beta. Now that that's downloaded, what we need to do is open up Etcher. I use Etcher for burning. To do this we'll select our image and then select our drive. As we can see here is my Toshiba drive that I select. When we click flash, we see that it's saying, are you sure, because this is a large drive and not an SD card. We select yes, and then let it burn. As it's finishing validating, we are going to move on to plugging our SD card into our Raspberry Pi and starting. As we can see, once we plug in the card, it finds it, mounts it, and then we'll boot. My Raspberry Pi has the boot mode set to F241. This tells it that it will boot from network, USB, and then SD card. When the reboot happens, what it is doing is it's expanding the file system on the hard drive automatically to fill all the available space. Once the boot has happened, we get to the Raspberry Pi desktop where we can continue setting up our Pi. What we will be doing is taking our Pi and setting up the NFS server. To do this, we'll open up a console. I'll just make the text uh, larger for you, so as you can see. We'll change to root. We will touch the boot SSH file, so in future we can SSH in. We will now search for our NFS packages to install. If we scroll up the list of available packages matching, we can see that there is an NFS kernel server. This is wish, what we wish to install to provide our NFS server. So we'll select the install. However, as my Pi is going to be booting from Ethernet, I will need to plug in the cable, which I've forgotten. We can see now that it's downloading the kernel server and installing, everything is happy with the Ethernet. Next, we need to edit our ETC exports file. This will provide all the export information for the NFS server as to what shares, permissions and mount options. We will be using the slash NFS directory I've just created. So let's edit the file. As you can see from the examples, this file simply contains a directory followed by a user followed by permissions. So we'll be setting the read, write, sync and no subtree check on these directories. Once we've added the line, simply save it and exit. As we can see, the exports aren't immediately picked up by the NFS server, so we will have to restart the NFS service. Once that is done, if we rerun our export FS, we will see our exports are indeed available. Lastly, we will check the IP address using ifconfig so that we can map the drive from another host. If you liked the video, please press the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.